Well, France's former foreign minister says Britain was planning a war against Syria two years before the crisis broke out in the Middle East country. Moi, je vais vous dire quelque chose. J'étais il y a deux ans à peu près, avant que les, les hostilités commencent en Syrie. Je me trouvais en Angleterre par hasard pour d'autres choses, pas du tout de la Syrie. J'ai rencontré des, des responsables anglais et quelques-uns qui sont mes habits m'ont avoué en me sollicitant qu'il se préparait quelque chose en Syrie. C'était en Angleterre et pas en Amérique. L'Angleterre préparait une invasion de, 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 des rebelles en, en Syrie. Et on m'a même demandé à moi, sous le prétexte que j'étais ancien ministre des Affaires étrangères, si je participerais comme ça à cette... Je lui ai évidemment dit le contraire, j'ai dit moi je, je suis français, ça ne m'intéresse pas. Mais c'est pour dire que cette opération vient de très loin. Elle a été préparée, conçue, organisée... Excusez-moi, dans quel but Roland Dumas made the comments in an interview with French TV station LCP. He said regime change in Syria was part of efforts to undermine regional resistance against Israel. Last month, under pressure from Britain and France, the European Union removed this arms ban on insurgents in Syria. Damascus accuses the United States and its allies of seeking to topple President Bashar al-Assad by supporting anti-government armed groups. Well, former U.S. Congressman Ron Paul slams the Obama administration for escalating the war in Syria. Today we heard from President Obama that the war in Syria will be escalated. He now has agreed to send weaponry in to assist the rebels. It's escalation, that's the proper word, because we've already been involved for quite a few months. We've been supporting the rebels for probably the past two years, supposedly for humanitarian reasons. But now there's going to be a much more aggressive approach, and we're going to send weapons. There's a few problems with this. Paul made the remarks in a statement posted on YouTube on Friday. Paul said presidents are not supposed to start war without permission from the people. He also dismissed Washington's claims that the Syrian government has used chemical weapons against insurgents, saying there are ill-founded accusations similar to those made in the run-up to the Iraq war. Two days ago, President Barack Obama ordered more military aid to foreign-backed insurgents fighting Damascus. Media reports say Washington is also mulling over the idea of a no-fly zone in Syria's south. Well, Saudi Arabia reportedly plans to supply tack fury insurgents in Syria with anti-aircraft missiles. According to German news weekly Der Spiegel, Riyadh is considering sending European-made Mistral-class man-portable anti-aircraft systems, quoting a classified report received by the German Foreign Intelligence Service. Der Spiegel noted that the shoulder-launched surface-to-air missiles can target low-flying aircraft, including helicopters. Saudi Arabia, along with Qatar, has already been giving other types of weapons as well as funds to the Takfiri insurgents fighting the Syrian government forces. Meanwhile, Syria slams Egypt's decision to cut off diplomatic ties with the country. Damascus' reaction comes after Cairo decided to close the Syrian embassy. A Syrian official has called Egypt's move irresponsible. He added that clearly Egypt is involved in a conspiracy against Syria. Egyptian President Mohamed Morsi announced the decision to sever ties with Syria on Saturday. Now, the Egyptian charged the affairs in Syria has left that country. Morsi has urged the United Nations Security Council to authorize a no-fly zone on Syria. The Egyptian president also called for an emergency summit of Arab and Islamic states to discuss the latest developments in the Syrian unrest. Morsi's move has drawn angry reactions from Syrians as well. I want to know who paid Mercy to do such a thing. He was given his orders from the United States to cut off all relations with Syria officially, but they were already cut anyway. Well, another day of deadly violence in Iraq, a string of bomb blasts and a shooting incident have rocked the country. At least 32 people have been killed and dozens injured in several southern and central cities and towns. A parked car went off in the city of Kut, while another targeted a gathering of construction workers outside of the city. Car bombs also ripped through the southern city of Basra, the southern city of Nasiriyah, and the town of Mahmoudia near Hella. 
A blast also struck the holy city of Najaf. Roadside blasts left several casualties in Maidan, southeast of Baghdad, and the northern city of Tuz Hormato. A shooting was also reported near the northern city of Mosul. A violence in Iraq has spiked sharply in recent months. About 2,000 people have been killed since the start of April.